ARC Texas is an organization that provides a home for children and young adults who are affected by trauma, abuse and neglect. Now, Triple H Equitherapy is working to help those kids by introducing them to horses. It's a program that can change their lives. This is all Stanley. Oh, you say hi to people? Zoe and Stanley, a human and a horse, creating an inseparable bond from the moment they met. We don't get paired. The horses choose us. The way Stanley had chosen me was he decided to just follow me around when I was going to meet all the other horses. So he just he just decided you were you were the one, huh? Yes, sir. At the beginning, the relationship was a little rocky, but things got smoother over time. He's kind of stubborn like me, and he just didn't really cooperate a lot. He normally would just stand there and wouldn't move. But as the eight weeks went on, we've really gotten better at it, and we just really got in a relationship that's more and whoa, more um, understanding towards each other. That relationship is what this two hour a week, eight week program is all about, along with learning how to care for Stanley. Most of them have not been around horses, so this also brings a sense of normalcy. Um, they're experiencing something new and being able to build a sense of trust and bond with these animals is just truly a miracle. As Zoe and her friends ride off into the sunset, this type of therapy doesn't really change the traditional therapy. It's just a way of introducing a different way to look at things. The human horse bond is the key to this program. The horses literally are the therapists. We do have a mental health professional here to help facilitate therapy, but the horses are the ones that make it happen. They are very empathetic. Horses are like humans. They bond with us. They connect with our feelings. They feel our vibes. So they just really help you with coping and everything because they understand you. Fantastic program out there at Triple H. Could not agree more. Yep. All right, we're going to head over to SA Live. Mike and Jen, how are y'all today? Wonderful. We're doing great. Yes, yeah. lots of food, some fun activities on the show today, but we'll start with the food, right, Mike? Yes, indeed. Our good friend Drew Glick, Drew Glick pardon me, from Max and Louie's New York Diner is here. And, you know, you got the corned beef sandwiches and the pastrami, but we're talking dessert, right? We're talking dessert. <laughs> I would say there's dessert here. <laughs> Banana pudding. And the trick is you need a meringue in there, not just whipped cream. And we got to sweeten it up just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and this is why I grew does the Italian. Why I'm not gonna, Italian to use glass. This is why we have so much fun here yeah. on this show. We need show. goggles on we're this show. Make this a little bit later in the show. Plus, we're also taking you to a road trip down on the outskirts up in the outskirts of Austin to Jester King Brewery where you can stay in some cabins, enjoy some great food, do some exploring and take in nature. And the Briscoe Western Art Museum is here. They have a spring break roundup. Meredith is going to show us one of the fun activities that are planned for the kiddos. Yeah. We've got to make a little pinch pot here. Eventually, we hope that it turns into something that looks a little bit more like this. And this is for Native American Heritage mm -hmm. Day, which will be Thursday, mm -hmm. right? During our spring break roundup of activities next week. And there's a bunch of other different fun activities and themes planned. That's all coming up. Amanda's looking at me, it's like, please don't, after that, don't touch my rabbit. So Amanda Winter from Once in a Wild is here. Easter Bunny is paying us a little early <laughs> visit, but wow, that's a big money. He sure is. This is Sandor, the Flemish giant rabbit. His ears are really big, aren't they? Yes, how well can he hear? They hear so well, they can hear up to two miles away from their own body. And she has got some other exotic animals. It's going to be <laughs> fascinating coming up. And I'm not going to break anything else on this lot. <laughs> Hopefully not. <laughs> Beautiful today and tomorrow, even warmer tomorrow with a high temperature in the mid 70s after some morning fog. But hey, that cold front on Friday, we'll all feel it. Temperatures falling into the 40s, wind chills in the 20s and 30s because of wind gusts up to 40 miles per hour, even a chance for some isolated showers in the mix. A morning freeze possible Saturday and Sunday late in the season, but at least sun will shine and temperatures will climb into the 60s over the weekend and 70s and 80s next week. Looking good next Keep week. Mike away from the blender for the rest of the show, Jen. Don't let him near it. Don't let him near it. Well, at least we know he can knows how to fix it. Well. Fix what he broke. Yeah, but he's got to clean that, all that busted up plastic out of the banana pudding. SA <laughs> Live starts right now. Celebrate San Antonio. Coming to you live from historic Market Square. This is SA Live. 
Wednesday. Never too early for a visit from the Easter Bunny or maybe just a cute giant rabbit. You'll meet this fellow in just a few minutes. Good afternoon. I'm Jen Tobias Shresky filling in and for Fiona. I knew they were going to give Mike a hard Mike time. <laughs> No, I got, all the I got all the plastic out of there. It's just two big pieces, so we're good, we're good to go there, David. So, but exactly. thank you anyway. And I'm like Osterhage. And all right, so you saw that that giant Flemish rabbit there, and it's one of the exotic animals. It got us to thinking: mm -hmm. if you could have any exotic animal, what would it be? Yeah. Uh, what is it? The cockatoo? Those, oh, okay. Because their personalities are so adorable. Mm. But I don't think I could ever really have one. So what about you? I would think a jaguar. I think they are the most beautiful oh. of the big cats. Yeah, no, they are. They're just beautiful. absolutely gorgeous. They so. can be nice and friendly, right? All, yeah. If only. <laughs> and we're, we've got a whole bunch, about a half dozen exotic animals coming yep. up a little bit later on in the show. But let us know, and maybe we'll see your answers uh, later on. Yep. Just tag us on SA Live, on Kesa, at SA Live Kesa on Facebook and Twitter. We may share those photos. All right. If you can't take a trip, this spring break, how about getting a taste of the Big Apple right here at home? Yes, indeed. Drew oh, yeah. Glick, who is the owner of Max and Louis New York Diner, is here to share some tips on using a KitchenAid <laughs> blender as well as making a really good dessert. Good to see you, sir. Thank you for having me, Matt. It's been a while. I owe you a plastic bowl. So We are not doing a YouTube of Michael using the uh, KitchenAid. Don't worry. It's another show in itself. Okay, what are we making today here? So we are making banana pudding. Now, when I think of New York Deli, I don't think of banana pudding necessarily. Well, it's a, it's a diner thing, we'll say. It's comfort okay. food. It's yes. diner. It doesn't necessarily mean New York, this particular item, mm -hmm. but it's a real comfort food. You yes. go to any diner around the country and you'll find some version mm. of banana pudding. And you said in the other restaurant you had before Max and Max and Louis that this was the number one dessert. It was uh, right? our banana pudding was the number one selling item. It was on the cover of magazines in San Antonio. Whoa. It was okay. uh, it was popular to say the least. And what's what's the secret? Uh, freshness. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, we make the uh, the uh, Italian meringue. You know, from scratch. I mean, everything is from scratch. I don't grow the bananas or make the nab the <laughs> okay. Nabisco Nilla wafers. Now, which you got to use Nilla wafers because, like we were saying, right. nothing tastes like that. So, usually, when I've made it at home, it's just vanilla pudding. What is? This is our pastry cream. So it's okay. a homemade mm -hmm. pastry cream that we use for this. We also use it for our uh, eggclairs and our cream puffs. Uh, okay. And then we, you know, put the bananas that kind of give it its banana, bananariness. Bananariness? Yeah, it's a new <laughs> word. <laughs> and word, so. and, and what makes word. this uh, an Italian meringue? Well, it's just uh, the <laughs> vanilla, the, um, just the, the, the method of mm -hmm. making it. Look at how pretty that is. You got oh, it perfect. Yeah. I forgot to look yeah, at the toasting. The toasting. <laughs> The toasting. Keep mm -hmm. going. Okay, okay. Yes, keep yes, going. Yes. You're you're, uh, you're you're doing great. <laughs> okay, don't so forget your banana. Did you put bananas in there? Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 it could be Nilla wafer pudding. Yeah, so we two of us in it. Yeah, yeah, forgot yeah, the cream. Yeah. I forgot We're the bananas. We're just a thousand here. Combine so. it together, you got the perfect. Okay, one and here. some of the other great desserts that you uh, have at your place. <laughs> oh well, we brought today, of course, mm. New York cheesecake, mm -hmm. uh, which we uh, make right here in San Antonio. We have a great bakery in town that uh, makes it to our specifications. This is an Italian cream. We'll talk about it in the next segment our new Italian menu. Mm -hmm. So this is a perfect fit for that. And then we, you know, bake our Linzer tarts and our uh, black and white cookies and ode to the Seinfeld, mm -hmm. you know, days. For those, those who are don't actually, know yeah. about the, the black and white cookies, can you yeah. describe that? That Because it's like a cakey, a it's like a cakey cookie, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, so the bottom is, is like a cake. Mm -hmm. It's got a little bit of lemon zest in it, so it's spongy. And then this is vanilla and chocolate ganache. Mm. Have you ever had one of these before? Uh, you know uh, I have. Uh, yes. Now, the other one that you have over there, mm -hmm. show the camera that's cooking? celebrating <laughs> a... Yeah. Hey, hold it that's up there for a second. Right there. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. That's celebrating a Jewish holiday that yeah. I, I don't think anybody's ever really heard of before. So this is, so next week is the Jewish holiday of Purim. And these are called Humintoshen or Hamintoshen. And during the fifth century, um, the Jews were being, you know, uh, with th threatened by this, you know, this ruler, mm -hmm. and he was defeated. And this is sort of a sweet celebration item of the defeat, and it's called again humintoshen. It's a pastry uh, pastry dough with apricot. Mm. Actually, traditionally, we do one with uh, with a, po a sweet poppy seed filling mm -hmm. and prune filling. 
you know, so, eat another meal. Okay. You want the prune filling? That's always might be a good item. <laughs> pass a couple. I'm going to pass here. them so down here. Okay. And now, and this just coincidentally coincides right before Passover. Yeah, well, it's just the you know throughout you. you know it's just another holiday in the uh, so in the in the sequence of the uh, lunar oh, year. Do you want me to do that? Yeah. Okay, she doesn't want to do <laughs> that. Yeah, watch your hand. Oh yeah. There we go. There we go. And then hold on, I'm going to jump in here. Let me and just the give final you one of those. I've already been digging in here, so and I'm going to try one yes. of those little things. Of those right and then there. of course other things on. You can just the break it in half. And break it in half uh, like that. Yeah, the other it's really, uh, it's New York diner favorites. I see. Ooh, chicken and waffles there. Yum. Yeah, so we have a new menu. We just introduced an, um, uh, an updated menu. And on there are some new breakfast items, lunch items. Uh, of course, you know, dinner, we have some new steaks. Mm -hmm. We've updated our whole bar. So we have, oh, a, yes, you know, we have a full bar, but we have all these new wines and Wonderful. cocktails. We have boozy milkshakes that we're, oh, um, ooh, yes. that we're doing in a big way. Oh. So there's just a lot of uh, and, and the mac brunch, and cheese. The brunch is awesome, because like you said, some people may forget that you have the bar and you have all the breakfast yeah, items. Yeah, we sell more, oh, and we, Crazy. we squeeze every drop of orange juice in the place mm. at the restaurant. It sounds great, and as you can see, there's a lot of <laughs> Italian there too, and we are gonna be making, because it is a, it's National Meatball Day today, mm. and so his secret recipe for meatballs, and we're gonna be doing that coming up a little bit later oh, on right. in the show. Yep, for more information on Max and Louie's New York Diner, just go to our website, salive.com, or you can click that QR code right there on your screen. Don't forget to click the As Seen on SA Live tab when you go to our yeah. website. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Hey, are you planning a trip? Well, we can help you out. This baby can. <laughs> That's right. Today on our Texas tripping, we take you to the outskirts of Austin to a farmhouse brewery where you can stay at cabins. You can go hiking and you can even oh, get cool. up close with baby goats. Take a look. Today on SA Live, we take you to Jester King Brewery. It's about an hour and a half drive north of San Antonio for some beer, food, hiking trails, cabins, and you can even get up close with some adorable goats. And I'm joined now by Jennifer Harlan, the innkeeper here at Jester King Brewery. And uh, there's so many things to do here at Jester King Brewery. It's not just yes. a brewery, right? No, no, we are actually what I would term a destination brewery where you're not just coming out for the beer or just for the food, although both of those are incredible here. Um, we also have five cabins with camping. We've got um, an event hall for private events. We also have our baby goats, which are always a crowd pleaser. Um, you know, so we really do, we're a family friendly, destination that has some of the most unique time, place, people all tied together. Right now, well, we're in the area where the cabins are. Can you describe some of these for me? Absolutely. Each cabin is entirely unique. We have our Ruby cabin, which is our family, you know, kind of more family centric, three bedrooms, two bath, definitely has room and a whole playroom for the kids. Our bunting, which I call our honeymoon cabin. Nice. Um, it's, it sleeps two, full shower, but it's actually where I spent my wedding night um, back in 2018 before we owned this place. Um, our Coyote Cabin, which is a historic cabin actually, um, as I mentioned to you earlier, it was built in the early 1900s. Mm -hmm. um, we actually moved it over here from East Austin. Um, it has been put together and put back together and is amazing on the inside. It's all reclaimed wood. You can see the nail holes, uh, but it actually sleeps 10 people and has its own bathroom. What? It's one of the, probably the most picturesque front porches I've ever seen. Oh, I love it. Yeah, and then our last two um, are kind of a play on the same theme. They're both these great little wooden cabins that are perfect for being quiet in the woods. They sleep four to six people and built for people who want to come enjoy nature and get to be on the grounds, but also get to enjoy everything that's in the area, not just the brewery, but everything out here in the Hill Country. And speaking of nature, there's 165 acres here that we're on. <laughs> wow, I mean, a lot of room. So, well, you've got your lodging taken care of. Let's say you stay here and then let's move on to talk about uh, the food, also the goats, everything else um, on the property. Absolutely, our food program um, is probably one of my favorite things to talk about, to be honest with you, because we uh, started off as a pizzeria, but when we took it over, we brought our chefs in, we brought our touch to it. We have some of the best, what I would call the best wood-fired pizza in Austin, and that's not a small claim to make in Austin. <laughs> um, but if you're here on site getting that customized pizza, it's it's just absolutely delicious. And then in the last six months, we've introduced our, our smoked meats program. So now not just pizza, but we're also trying to bring the best of the world in barbecue. Oh you know, so we don't tackle small things out here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can smell it, by the way. I'm already hungry. 
On the property, you can explore hiking trails and a goat experience that you can add to your itinerary, getting up close to all these cute little babies. They get to see, feed, you know, help us, you know, maintain the land, maintain the, the grounds for the goats. Um, and also, who doesn't love baby goats? I know, I'm so excited <laughs> to meet those little cuties. And we can't forget about the beer, all brewed here on site. Our beer program has now grown. We, you know, we started off with farmhouse. For a long time, we had a reputation of being the, the funky beer place, uh, <laughs> you know, the sour beer place. But now, you know, we actually have a distributor's license and we brew everything on site that you drink on site. Well, Jennifer, I've enjoyed my time here at Jester King. You too can come visit. They're open Wednesday through Sunday. Just check the website for their hours. We also have all the information on salive.com. Just click the As Seen on SA Live tab. Now it's time to take a bite, all Absolutely. right? Absolutely. You're going to go with the bread. I'm going to go with the pizza. Mmm. Mmm. That's great. Yeah, exactly. What a neat place, though. Yeah, you that. can do everything there and very kid friendly as well. And this Friday, they're bringing back their movie nights. They're showing Back to the Future um, at 7 p.m. So they say to arrive early, bring your blankets. And then next week, they have extended spring break hours. So, if, if, by the way, if you are going Friday night, yes, definitely take a couple of blankets because it's going to be very Thank cold. You. Hey, if you want to find their, cal <laughs> their calendar of events, uh, just head over to SALive.com, click on the As Seen on SALive tab, or just snap that QR code right there Wait, on your no. screen. <laughs> Still ahead on SA Live, another round of spring break kicks off next week and you can send your kids back to the old west. We get a taste of this camp. It's a lot of fun. It's right here in town. But first, it's a wild Wednesday. Can you guess who this is? He looks like a turtle that can't swim. We reveal the cute critter and how you can meet him yourself. It's next on SA Live. Yes, indeed, it is a wild Wednesday, and the Easter Bunny was well, a big guy. He's going to be hopping into town soon, and you could get a visit from one of his furry friends. That's Sandor the Giant Rabbit, and bringing him today is Amanda Winter, founder and animal specialist from Once in a Wild Zoo. And, and the, there's a reason I'm doing this, right? <laughs> <laughs> the more you pet Sandor, the better he'll feel and the stiller he will be okay. <laughs> on the table. Got you, he loves that. He loves that. Okay. <laughs> Look at his tail sticking up. <laughs> and he's, he's, like, he's just like in heaven right now. So I like, know. Don't stop. He don't loves stop. <laughs> That's a really big rabbit. He is a big rabbit. So he's a Flemish giant rabbit, as I think we already said, and it's on the screen, um, which is one of the largest breed of rabbit in the world. They're and what's amazing. He, what's he weigh? He weighs about 22 pounds, more or less. I haven't weighed him today. That's but. bigger than my dog, and he's yeah. a schnauzer. So is what that are some? Pretty oh, I'm sorry. I was gonna say, is that pretty much oh, the okay. biggest that they get? Uh, that I mean, some may be bigger than okay. others, depending on their weight and things like that. Females are actually a little bit heftier than the boys um, mm. because they have the babies usually, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so they're usually a little heavier sometimes. Um, but that is about average of what they weigh. And <laughs> is he a gentle giant? He sure say, is. He is definitely a gentle giant. He's given our little tortoise a kiss already. <laughs> uh, he loves everybody and loves being pet. <laughs> and rabbits are rodents, <clears throat> excuse me, but a different kind of strain of rodents, right? Or are not they? quite. They're okay. actually not a rodent at all. So oh. rodents have different teeth than rabbits. Rabbits and rodents both have ever-growing incisor teeth that they have to chew on things and wear their teeth down. It's very important for them to stay healthy, eating the right foods, chewing on toys, things like that if you have them as pets. Um, however, rabbits are what we call lagomorphs. Lagomorphs are rabbits, hares, and pikas. So they're in a different family than rodents. And differently, you said they have four teeth on top and two on the bottom. That is right. You were paying attention from earlier, right? <laughs> there. They have four teeth on the top and two on the bottom, and rodents have two and two. And, and the hares are longer legs, you said? Right? Yeah, okay. so hares are close cousins to the rabbits, but rabbits have shorter legs than hares. Hares are a little faster. Hares have more uh, developed babies when they have their young, and hares tend to be a little more solitary than rabbits. And carrots are not eaten in the wild, right? They are not. Uh, rabbits do not eat carrots in the wild at hmm. all. It only comes from Bugs Bunny, thanks uh, Looney Tune. <laughs> um, that is a myth, but they can have carrots as treats on occasion, kind of like cookies okay. or banana pudding. Who, who, who is this guy with the... Uh, He's got some cool hair. His hair over uh, rock the, wild, hair. the wild rock star over there, <laughs> yes. that's Iggy Pop. <laughs> and Iggy Pop is a Peruvian guinea pig. Hi. 
<laughs> now, Peruvian, is that is that why the long hair? Yeah, or? so it's a special breed as well, mm -hmm. just like Sandor the rabbit is a Flemish giant rabbit. That's a special breed. The Peruvian guinea pig has long, straight, ever-growing hair, <laughs> and that is actually a rodent right there. <laughs> He's a rodent, believe and, it or not. And you said they are not pigs, and they are not from Guinea. They are not pigs, And where, where do right. the names come from? So the word pig comes from um, the fact that they squeal like a pig, and they even grunt like a pig. He's going to go say hi to our, our friend Iggy, too, and check him out. Um, but they do make noises similar to pigs sometimes. They're very social and talk a lot with different yes. vocalizations. And they used to sell them for about one guinea or less over in Europe when they brought them over as pets from okay. South America. And they do make good house pets. You have they one. Do. We I used do. to have guinea uh, pigs. That we can't see your I face think so. there. There, there he is. Oh, he's there like, he come is. on, Mike, you're oh, ruining my yeah, style. Sorry, oh, yeah. my goodness. Yeah, the bunny's going to come photo bomb. And who do we have here? <laughs> and the tortoise is going to come. He's coming right back. <laughs> uh, this is Shelton John, and he is a red-footed <laughs> tortoise. Red-footed tortoises come from the same continent as the guinea pig, which is South America. And these guys are herbivores. They move slowly. And do you think they can swim? Or no, that no the question, a, tortoise, right? mm. a tortoise cannot swim at all. So he would actually sink if he went into any sort of Aww. depth of water. They're not designed for swimming. They don't have web feet or flippers. They have what we call elephantine feet or tree trunk feet. And they carry their heavy shells and bodies only on land. And they only eat plants. I was going to ask, what do they like to eat? That's a great question. Yeah. Shelton loves any type of plant or fruit, uh, but his favorites are actually bananas. <laughs> Interesting. We've got some banana pudding. I, I see. Bananas Maybe today. he's heading that way. <laughs> and we have got some more exotics coming up a little bit later on. If you like things that are kind of uh, slimy and scaly and creepy, yeah, that's, that's <laughs> coming. Yes, exactly. And you can book a once in a while zoo for any event coming up. So just contact them. We have all the information on salive.com and you can click the As Seen on SA Live tab or you can scan that QR code. The, he's very friendly. Look at him. He just I know. They all love each other. Got to be in the spotlight here. <laughs> Thank you like so said, much. More coming up with the Amanda in just a couple of minutes. <laughs> Still ahead on SA Live, they're known for their over-the-top menu. We check out the king-sized dish in a local restaurant has to help you enjoy National Meatball Day. And next, if you're having sleep problems even before the upcoming time change, you might need some extra help. The clinic in town helping people get a good night's sleep. That's straight ahead on SA Live. Welcome back to SA Live. We're about to spring forward this weekend, and that means we're all going to lose an hour of sleep. But if you're losing sleep already, maybe because of snoring, or if you're just tired all the time and you don't know why, you may have a problem with sleep apnea. And joining us to tell us more about the condition is sleep technician Veronica Morillos with the Center for Sleep Apnea and Snoring. Welcome. Thank you for having me. And so for those who don't know what sleep apnea is, please let us know. What is that? Yes, so sleep apnea, it happens to more people than you think. It's when you have pauses in breathing while you're sleeping, and this could happen hundreds of times during the night. What happens is, you know, you have your airway, all of a sudden, you're, you know, breathing normally, your airway collapses, and this happens over and over and over, and it could be very dangerous. Yeah, because it's happening in your sleep, right? Exactly. And so, yeah. we need to look out for the symptoms. Snoring is one. What are some snoring other symptoms? Snoring is one of the major symptoms, right? A lot of people, not only does the snoring bother your partner, you know, Know, just like you're watching they get so frustrated they cannot sleep but another one is after you slept around eight hours you're still feeling exhausted you know you have headaches during the day mm -hmm. you're fatigued you know you're falling asleep while you're working while you're driving again very dangerous yes it can affect you all throughout the day okay so yes. you've probably seen that big CPAP machine it's used to treat sleep apnea it's bulky it needs to be plugged in for it to work but do you have something portable and small that can actually help with sleep apnea as well. So tell us about the oral appliance. We do. So we have an oral appliance. It's called a MAD, a mandibular advancement device. What it does is it brings that lower jaw forward and it opens that airway naturally. The CPAP works by forcing air down your nose and down your throat to keep that airway open. But a lot of people feel like they're drowning and they just feel like, oh my gosh, it's just way too much air. Now, if you're using the CPAP and it's working for you, great. Mm -hmm, but most mm -hmm. of the people that are getting a CPAP, they're ringing it home, they put it under the bed, 
collects dust. So we provide the appliance to help you because something it's better than nothing. Yes, and it's also convenient, would you say? Or if the power goes out, you, you don't have to plug exactly. it in. Exactly, so. yeah, the power goes off. You don't have to, it's easy to travel with, you know, mm -hmm. because you just put it in your little case, you travel with it, and believe me, you want to travel with that because <laughs> if you go out of town with your husband or your wife and they're snoring, you're not going to have a good spring break coming up. <laughs> <laughs> right, you want to enjoy your trip, get a good night's sleep. Yeah. And now, is this covered by insurance? Yes, most major insurances do cover the appliance. Okay, good to know. And you have a special deal for our SA Live viewers? We do. The first 25 callers get a free consultation. You call our office, you schedule an appointment. We should be giving you a call back later on today or tomorrow. And then um, you come in and visit us and we go from there, set you on the right path. Got it. All right. So if you have any of those symptoms, you feel like you may have this, just go give them a visit and they can help you to figure it all out. Again, the first 25 people to call will get a free consultation. That's $200 in savings. Just call 210-598-8200. And for more information, you can visit the website, stopsnoringtx.com. Veronica, thank you so much. Thank you. Next on SA Live, they seem so simple, but a tasty one is out of this world good. We're learning how to nail the perfect New York style meatball. You don't want to miss this. Ooh, look at that spaghetti and meatballs. Yes, indeed, from a local diner. This local diner does a bit of everything right now, and it is part of their Italian fare. And Drew Glick from Max and Louis Diner is back. New York Diner is back. And now you always think of you know Max and Louis as being a deli, but diners have everything basically right yeah I mean in, in New York or just anywhere I mean they're, they're Greek diners they're country diners they're Jewish diners there's just all different things so the the menu is like our menu is eight pages long <laughs> but it's um, you know so we have we have breakfast two you know two full pages of breakfast and pages of lunch and then dinner and then desserts and bars and it's a lot of pages okay and your Reuben and the corned beef and pastrami are fantastic and my favorites but then we've got the Italian menu too, the Italian right? menu and today is a special day today is national meatball day I didn't know it so yeah. what goes into the perfect Italian meatball well we do uh, only beef. Mm -hmm. You can do pork, you can do turkey, you know, my, my wife's mother would sneak us, tell us it was beef, but it was uh, turkey meatballs. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and you can, you can sniff that out a yeah, mile exactly, away, right? Exactly. But uh, yeah, and then depending on what style meatball, Italian or um, Swedish or any of these different style meatballs, but ours are a true Italian meatball. Okay. So it's, it's ground beef, it, um, fresh Italian breadcrumbs, um, Pecorino Romano cheese, Onion. eggs, onions, okay. uh, milk. And then you said the trick is you bake them first. Yes, yeah, so we, we um, bake them mm -hmm. and then pour off the excess, uh, you know, uh, fat oil. Okay. And then when we serve them to our, um, to our guests, then these have to go those in here. go into the sauce. We could okay. actually give a little, little fire. And besides spaghetti and meatballs, you have a meatball sandwich, right? Right. We do a meatball hoagie. Okay. And, and so we bake this bread in house to get the perfect bread. You bake it. Yeah, we bake it. We use uh, the Philly cheesesteak for some reasons become one of the biggest selling items on our menu, and I couldn't find the right bread, so we decided we would just start baking it ourselves. Because a Philly cheesesteak is great too. So. Uh, it is good. We do what a Philly cheesesteak omelet. We do a Philly cheesesteak calzone now. Would you rather have a Philly cheesesteak or a meatball sub? Meatball sub by far, personally. Okay. Personally. All right. How do but you build I do it? eat both. Oh, so how do we build it? Yeah. So we're going to just put, now at Max and Louis, we can turn that down if you'd like right. a little bit. Now these meatballs are not small, as you can see. Those aren't, those are the size of tennis balls just about. And then so. if you want to grab the, you grab the mozzarella cheese. Okay, mozzarella. And, and then we put a little extra top. sauce. And then this goes on and top? And then this, I like a lot. Okay. You know, we'll um, you can keep going there. You know, we usually do this over a little plate so it doesn't go everywhere, but. Yeah, it's okay. And then we put this in our, in our cheese melter, or, you know, and, mm -hmm. we, and we melt it. Um, but for today, we're gonna eat meatballs and spaghetti. That sounds as perfect. As our dish. 
um, since I don't have a cheese melter right behind me. <laughs> it's okay. So, all right. Uh, of the eight pages of things on your menu, about how many different items would you say you have? Uh, we have, um, oh, I mean hundreds. Hundreds and thousands? Not thousands, okay. but probably hundreds. I mean, you can take the hundreds and turn them into thousands. There's not one ticket that comes into the, um, into the kitchen that is as it's written on the, t on the, on the menu. Every ticket is modified. Oh, Even really? as simple as breakfast, you know, scrambled eggs and sunny sides and over mediums and over hards and poached and all that. Okay. And then people want, you know, less cheese and more cheese and no cheese. And, How can you have less cheese? You gotta you have know, more I, cheese. I agree, but mm -hmm. some people don't, you know, can't eat cheese. Okay. And then breads, you know, we have five, you know, 10 different style, style breads you can put everything on. We mm -hmm. even do gluten free, so you can have our French toast is our biggest selling item on our menu. So pretty much anybody that has any appetite, any flavor, any taste, can find it there. Yeah, and even you know, uh, gluten free or vegetarians. Okay. I mean, my grandmother's um, soup that I've been eating since I've been eating mm -hmm. um, is totally vegetarian. It's okay. split pea, but it's really vegetable soup with split pea. Go, go celebrate National Meatball Day because oh, those yeah. are really good meatballs. <laughs> Fantastic. So, if you'd like more information on Max and Louise Diner, right there, click on the As Seen on Essay Live tab or snap that QR code at the bottom of the screen. Good seeing you, sir. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. very much for having me. Next on SA Live, from scavenger hunts to standing up to earthquakes, there's a lot of fun activities for kids at a local spring break camp. We get a sneak peek, so don't go anywhere. Wrangle in some spring break fun at the Briscoe Western Art Museum. You can have some fun with all the activities that they have coming up for spring break. And Meredith Balls, in the marketing and communications manager, joins me now with some of the fun projects for the little ones. And I'm very excited because you have a lot going on. We do. We have a great spring break program coming up next Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. We want everyone to come down and join us at the Briscoe. I'm so excited. My kids are off next week. I know it was round one this week for mm -hmm. a lot, but uh, I'm glad to know that you have some activities lined up and we'll start with the earthquake one and this is STEAM inspired, right? Right, so this is our brand new program. It's called STEAM. Um, obviously everyone kind of knows what it is, but next Saturday we're doing it so that we learn about earthquakes. And sometimes you think, how does an earthquake revolve around the West? But when you think of the landscape, that's how you kind of incorporate the two. So our, our um, activity that we're doing today um, um, the first step is we're going to ask the kids to create a little house out of recyclable materials. Mm -hmm. So we can go ahead and make our little house out of something. Okay. Um, Got yeah. It. I'll let you. Okay. <laughs> we'll do that, and then we'll try it on our little earthquake table and see how it goes. Oh, didn't even uh -oh. start. So. <laughs> That's the first round. Uh -huh. And then we'll kind of take them through the design process, the engineering process, creative thinking, teamwork, and then we'll say, what are we missing? We're missing mm. some glue. Glue. And mm -hmm. um, we will ask kids, we'll have little hot glue guns there too. Yes, yes. Um, we'll ask kids to glue and make their own little house and see if they can withstand an earthquake there. And then this guy. And that is an actual done product. Hot so, glue and all. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, there you oh, go. Oh, oh, yeah. Woohoo. I love that. We're standing in Great. earthquake. And using the materials that we have, maybe even around the house. So this is something that they can even do at home. Really. Yeah, absolutely. It teaches some great create critical thinking skills. I love that. Okay, so we have the earthquakes and, and mm -hmm. how it's all tied in, like you mentioned, right. mm -hmm. uh, the, the land and whatnot, but you also have uh, some other projects here for right. Thursday, I believe, right? Yes. yes. Uh huh. On Thursday, it's our Native American Heritage Day. So we have a couple different things. We have this model clay um, that we'll have everyone will make their little pinch pots. We have weaving that we can do. We can have weaving on here which is nice and fun, or you can weave your own little pla uh, paper bowl. Mm -hmm. And then on um, Friday, we will have blue bonnet drawing, which is really great. These aren't blue bonnets, but they're in the same family. Mm -hmm. um, and then we'll have this roving bison activity that we can do. And then we'll also have partnered with the Texas Wildlife Association, we'll have skins and skulls. So kids can come and look and see those. So wow. it'll be a great week of programming. So the kids obviously can have fun there, but there's also a lot of history, right? And I'm sure that's incorporated as well, kind of educating them as well, right? Right, so the Briscoe is located right on the river walk in downtown San Antonio. It's only been open for eight years. Um, we incorporate the four pillars of Western art, 
wildlife, Native American, cowboys, and the Tejano history into all of our activities. So everything that they will come and do at the Briscoe, they'll be able to learn a little bit more about our Western heritage. Love it. So educational and fun, and they get to get crafty and have some earthquake fun as well. What do parents need to know if they want to sign their kiddos up? Well, it's walk up. Um, anyone can come and join us, but kids are free. Kids under 12. What? So it's a great thing. I know I'm going to bring my kids. I've got two little ones who I know will have fun with this activity. Mm -hmm for sure. So um, yeah, join us at the Briscoe next week. All right, wonderful. So many great activities. There's different themes for each day and obviously the educational part, which is always imp important for you guys. All right, so sign up now for the Spring Break Roundup at the Briscoe Western Art Museum, Thursday, March 17th through Saturday, March 19th. And for more information, you can head over to our website, salive.com. Just click the As Seen on SA Live tab. Thank you so much. Thank you. Next on SA Live, critters from around the globe, right here in the Alamo City, how you can get up close with these exotic animals. And don't worry, they're really not that scary. Keep it right here. Welcome back to SA Live. People are often afraid of animals like this one right here, maybe <laughs> spiders and snakes, but you know, a little education could maybe change your mind. Yes. He's doing pretty good. <laughs> Indeed, and Amanda Winter from Once in a Wild is back with us to teach us about some well, kind of misunderstood little friends. They need love too, right? I mean, That's right, <laughs> all animals are important and some are misunderstood, right? And Mike, mm -hmm. you're doing really well with her. So she's she, a pink-toed tarantula. That's right, that's Tiptoes, the pink-toed tarantula. Tiptoes. Isn't she cute? But See how I named does, that? <laughs> but she does not have pink toes. She doesn't anymore. So when they are spiderlings or baby spiders, they are bright blue with a little bit of stripes mm -hmm. and they have bright pink toes. And as they molt their exoskeleton and grow up, they change color. Okay, now most all spiders are venomous. Correct. But, but tarantulas, they can't, I mean, you know, I see the movies and people get bitten by a tarantula. I forgot to tell you how deadly she is. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. She's going to run. As it, as it starts moving <laughs> faster just when you say that. Thank you. No, she is not deadly to humans whatsoever. They are very, very mild as far as their venom goes. Mm -hmm. Their venom is basically just to paralyze their food, which is very tiny bugs. And they can't actually chew, so they simultaneously, as they're biting with venom, they drool on their food and that liquefies their food Whoa. and they get to drink it up. And these? Yum. Yeah. Now and they, you tell me she drools. <laughs> they don't live in webs now, do they? Or? They actually do. Okay. So believe it or not, tarantulas do weave webs as well. And tarantulas make thicker webs than other spiders we think of traditionally, like Charlotte's Web or something, making a little yes. cute web in the corner. Yeah. These guys will make more like a cobweb or a hammock, and they will be often seen lounging in their oh, little hammocks good. in the jungle. Well, yeah. She's getting very comfortable with you. Yeah, uh, exactly. Come Maybe your, your oh, comfy don't, sweater. Don't come up toward the, the oh. face. No. Oh my goodness. It looks like a, a cute little brooch on your sweater. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Super cute. Just hold that position. Okay. 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 Should we okay. move on to the next animal? Come here. Come. Whatever y'all want. Yeah, so they are often misunderstood, by the way, but spiders are very important for the natural environment because yes. they eat some of those roaches and flies for us. Okay. Shall we right. meet our next yes, let's animal? Meet the next well, one. you know, Mike's doing a weird maneuver over there. Uh, so our next animal is actually BT, the blue tongue Whoa. skink lizard. You you're you're nice. welcome to actually pet BT okay. if you want to. You see how he feels. Like corn on a cob. Like it's like corn on a cob. <laughs> That's right. Uh, don't try to eat him. So what's the difference between a skink and a lizard? Well, a skink is a type of lizard, Okay. but I remember earlier you were asking about a salamander, yeah. remember? So salamanders are in the amphibian uh, category or family. Uh, salamanders are related to frogs and newts. Uh, lizards are reptiles, so they're dry skin. They have scales instead of slimy skin like an amphibian does. And skinks like these um, are often kind of snake-like in their appearance, yeah, right? They I have short that. legs. Mm -hmm. At first glance, might look like a little snake in there, and mm -hmm. that's how they stay safe most of the time. And are, how is their uh, temperament? Are they kind of, how do they act? Um, they this type of skink is actually pretty mellow. Mm -hmm. um, there's other types that we have right here in Texas that are a little more skittish. Um, mm -hmm. And that's just because they're afraid of people. When you walk mm -hmm. by, they'll try mm -hmm. to hide under the leaves and things like that. But they're much smaller than this species right here. This is an Indonesian species, mm -hmm. and they also live in Australia. So you'll only see them oh. all the way across the world. Okay, wow. now my really least cool. favorite thing that she has, <laughs> the boa constrictor. Yes, this is David Boa. <laughs> <laughs> and David is about four and a half to five years old. Yes, you're more than welcome to pet him. Very, very good. They're also very smooth, kind of like BT, yeah. a little less bumpy. And these guys are found in Colombia. It's a Colombian boa constrictor, of course. 
And of course, they're not venomous or poisonous at all. Um, the tarantula is actually more venomous than this guy. Uh, but this guy is a constrictor. So they are one of the larger type of snakes found in South America, but they're not nearly as big as like an anaconda, right? But they still use their body to squeeze. And what do they eat? Anything they can get a hold of? Uh, other animals, <laughs> but usually going to be mammals or birds. And on occasion, iguanas tend to be oh. in their diet as well. Okay. Yeah, every and, now and then. <laughs> and you have got uh, dozens and dozens yes. of animals, and you can come to your your house, your party. Um, Absolutely. If you want to have, the, like you said, the Easter Bunny or his, yes. Yes. his cousin come to your house and <laughs> just get a hold of you, right? Get you can you can call for the Easter Bunny or you can have the Easter Snake. Whatever floats your boat, <laughs> we can bring them over. And uh, we would love Easter to visit snake. your birthday party, classroom, uh, maybe <laughs> church event coming up for Easter, anything at all. Perfect. We can bring the zoo to you. Oh, so much. <laughs> yes. You're welcome. Okay. You're doing great over there. <laughs> For more information on Once in a Wild Zoo, you can head over to our website, salive.com, click the As Seen on SA Live tab, or just snap the QR code on your screen. Mike, you're okay? I'm fine. <laughs> and I think the trance was asleep. Hey, tomorrow on SA Live, <laughs> West Side Story like you've never seen it. This is fantastic, let me tell you. We give you a sneak peek at this immersive Broadway experience. Mm, that looks fun. Plus, we're taking you to SeaWorld to check out a new thrilling ride. That's tomorrow at 1 on SA Live. Earlier, we asked you if you could own an exotic animal. Which would you want? Oh, we said, ooh, that's pretty. Along the lines with my Jaguar. Yes. So, okay. Of course, we have a piece of this delicious cake. And this is for a very special birthday. There's a gentleman <laughs> who sits behind the set way up here. His name is Patrick. He is our director. There he is up there, and it is his birthday today. Aww. There you go. Happy <laughs> birthday, sir. We couldn't do it without him. I wonder if Wait he was to the camera. <laughs> Are you going to say something or just? No. <laughs> Happy birthday, Patrick. We'll see you all tomorrow. <laughs>